The top stories. Busy Williams says there's too much racial division in Barbados. A man is charged in the fatal stabbing of a British engineer. And the Barbados team is named for Bushy Park's next big event. Welcome to Nation News for Thursday, June the 19th, 2014. Ralph Busy Williams says there's still too much racial segregation in Barbados and he wants the situation to change. Mr. Williams, the chairman of Williams Industries and a serial investor, said he'd witnessed just how separated the races in Barbados lived following his marriage in August 2007 to entrepreneur Shirley Williams, which has made them one of the country's most prominent mixed race couples. He made the comment during the monthly editor's forum here at The Nation. Barbados, Mr. Williams said, is the most segregated country in the Caribbean. He added, I go to parties and quite often, and I'm the only white person there. And then I go to other parties and Shelley is the only black person there. It is difficult to understand. The words of Busy Williams, and there's a full report on what he had to say on a range of topics in Friday's Weekend Nation. Police have charged a 54-year-old man in Sanders' stabbing death of a British national in St. Lawrence Gap. He is Michael O'Neill Beckles of First Avenue, Maxwell Coast Road, Christchurch. Mr. Beckles is expected to appear at the District Air Magistrates Court on Friday. Brian Paul Mulligan, who was a telecoms engineer on a work contract in Barbados after a career in the British military, died after an apparent dispute with a man at dawn on Sunday. Let's talk student sexual abuse is the subject of a two-day conference. It began with a pledge by the Chief Education Officer to continue to take a firm stand on the sexual abuse of students. Larry King said the Ministry intended to work with NGOs to minimize any challenges which could impact the wholesome learning environment in schools. Handwriting may be on the way out for some because of new technology, but for others, it is a tradition that is worth preserving. Like head of the Isaiah 55 Training Center, Cassandra Brown, who is encouraging children to perfect their handwriting skills. She spoke as winners from six primary schools were presented with their prizes in the annual handwriting competition organized by the center and the Ministry of Education. The Ministry of Health has held a food handling training session for crop over vendors. It took place in Jubilee Gardens in the city where vendors were given tips on personal and food hygiene. Senior Environmental Health Officer Colin Brown said the session was held in the open air to allow more people to attend. An anguished mother believes nighttime pledge about cruising is becoming dangerous and should be banned. Lolita Callender, whose son disappeared at sea more than three years ago, said reports that three men fell off the Buccaneer this month brought back a flood of memories. Her son Simeon Charlie Callender fell off the same boat and is believed to have drowned. His body was never recovered. Even though there was a memorial service for Charlie, Lolita still grieves and struggles to come to grips with not knowing the full details of Charlie's tragic last moments at sea. And you can read more of her story in the Weekend Nation. Design students of the Samuel Jackman Prescott Polytechnic deserve the chance to produce for local fashion designers. That from Polytechnic instructor Joy Prime as she spoke about a collaboration between the students and designer Andrea King. Five students will produce the 14 garments in the Fifth Element Design Spring Summer Collection 2015. The students have been busy constructing patterns and will begin cutting hopefully next week. In sport, Wesley Hall Primary and Grantley Prescott will contest next student's final of the Bico Primary School's football competition. Wesley Hall came from two goals down to beat George Lamming 3-2 in their semi-final. Thanks to strikes from Raul Bowen, the prolific Kimar John and Rivaldo Clark. Playmaker Zane Knight had given George Lamming the two-goal first half cushion. Grantley Prescott were always in charge of their match against Cuthbert Moore with 
Devont Richard slotting home in the first half. And Ronaldo, oh, that name comes up a lot. Roberts had in the finish in the second half for a 2-1 win. So Barry Lynch pounced on a penalty shot, which rebounded from the upright to score the consolation goal for Cuthbert Moore just before the final whistle. And finally, a story about a final indignity. The 440 pound body of a man was rejected from a morgue at an Australian hospital for being too fat after a funeral director had driven more than two hours with the deceased in her hearse. Apparently, the body couldn't fit into the fridge. And that's Nation News for Thursday, June the 19th. It's available on our website, nationnews.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Facebook, and Twitter. And look out for Friday's Weekend Nation.